Oh, I, I don't think the government should control a woman's body. Of course not. Yeah. But when you're pregnant, there's another human life involved. You're pregnant with what? You can't a have human being. And listen, what's the point of rule of law? What's the point of law in a society? It's to protect the weak, right? The strong can care for themselves, but the weak are vulnerable. They need the support of the, of the law. And the law should protect the first human right, of course, which is life, the right to live, to not be killed in a violent abortion. Abortion is violence against a child. It's not health care. It traumatizes women. It's killed over 60 million children since well, Roe was decided. But, in the year after a woman has an abortion, she's 150% more likely to attempt suicide, according to numbers from the state of California. That's not true. That's the not true. You're facts. I don't know the where you're getting that. The data proves that. Fact check. Yeah. That's the data proves that abortion is devastating. It kills a child and it's devastating oh. for women. Because you're you're saying they're they're fighting for, you know, pro life is is fighting for the the unborn, the, the preborn. But where are they once they are born? Um, let me tell you, we live can, action tell you. Um, are very proactive about helping these children once they are born in terms of, of e education and supporting them in the home and, and matching them to resources and have been for a long time. So it's not like I want to push this baby into the world and then disappear. That's the last thing that, that y'all do. Right. So I wanted to make I, I, that thank point. Thank you, Dr. Bell. I think it's a tremendous mischaracterization of the media, many who are pro-abortion, uh, about the pro-life community and about you know live action. But the reality is we're out there offering solutions, offering options, financial care for women, mm -hmm. job placement, adoption plan options, fostering kids, working with families. That's the pro-life solution is seeing the value of the mother and the child, bringing the family together, supporting yeah. families. Well, There's thousands of pregnancy centers I can't speak to the whole pro-life. I know them. I know, I know I know hundreds of them. I know that live action is very proactive in doing I that. Can, um, hi, everybody. My name is Jess Meath, and this might shock you, but I am a pro-life Democrat. I work for Democrats for Life of America, and I am so glad that the peop that my fellow brothers and sisters who are pro-choice, yes, you are my brothers and sisters. We are not enemies. I see eye to eye with you about these issues of social safety nets for the mother who's carrying her baby in the womb. That is 1,000% important in this conversation. And I'm relieved that we have the platform of Dr. Phil show to talk about this because I have not seen the mainstream media, and I hope we can see eye to eye on this, not address who's really being affected here. And that's women in underserved and minority communities. 75% of women seek abortion due to economic hardship, according to Guttmacher Institute. Mm -hmm. That is harrowing, and that is, and that is, that that should awaken all of us. Before I worked at Democrats for Life, I actually worked at a nonprofit that financially assists abortion-minded women. These women felt like they didn't have an option. They felt like, due to their circumstances, they could not keep their baby. They felt they they would ask me, and they would tell me, I I don't feel like I have a choice. So we would help them pay their rent, their groceries, their utilities, their transportation, during and after pregnancy. We have to be pro-life for the whole life. When does the other person get to choose to live? There are two people involved in every abortion. There is the mother and then there is the child. And that's the problem with your position because it denies the humanity of that little person. Where do babies come from? We are debating about when life starts. We know that egg and sperm meet. There's an actual little spark of life, that light, that happens. They can't explain it, but that's when they meet. And the unique DNA that makes you who you are is formed at that moment. And that one single cell then grows into a clump of cells and continues to evolve and develop. And, and we become less dependent. If we can kill something that is dependent upon us, why can't we kill college students? Why can't we kill the elderly? Why can't we kill a two-year-old baby? Because dependency does not define life. Listen, I, I've been privileged with the stories of hundreds of women. Our organization reports on the stories of thousands of women who share their regret, their pain, their trauma, physical trauma, emotional trauma after abortions. Why aren't they represented? Why, why weren't they interviewed and talked to here? They, their stories deserve to be told. And that's why we're announcing a campaign called Can't Stay Silent, which is the stories the 
untold stories of women and the pain they feel after their abortions, when they were promised their abortion was good for them, when instead abortion hurt, hurt, hurt them. You became unwantingly you didn't want to become an advocate for abortion. I don't think that's who you are. Where I'm most offended is that I'm tired of people saying to black and brown women, the answer to your poverty is abortion. Margaret Singer, and someone mentioned that in the audience, Dr. Phil, she said in her letter, and I sent it to you, it says, we do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the man who can strengthen, straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. And she's the founder you of know, Planned Parenthood. Yes, and they're behind it. Planned, Planned Parenthood yeah. and, and other but pro-abortion let me, please, groups. Lala, let me finish, please, because mm-hmm. I have to say this, because mm-hmm. this is why one of the reasons why I'm whole life. And I understand that people think that legislators who legislate in area abortion are um, don't legislate. I, I carried the death penalty bill to eliminate the death penalty because I thought that was important. I also carried the Medicaid expansion bill. This is not about me, but I'm talking about women all over the Capitol who are pro-life, who are standing together because we are whole life. I understand and I will admit there are advocates who are pro-life who become pro-birth because after voting for those bills, they never vote for anything else. A lot of us are not those advocates, but we do understand the history of abortion. We understand the history of abortion in that Margaret Singer, the the, the, um, founder of Planned Parenthood, brought abortion to the black communities because we were growing at alarming rates. Hispanic communities were growing at alarming rates. They brought abortion to our community to ensure we didn't procreate at the rates we were. And as a result of that, we talk about voting rights. We've lost millions and millions of African-American babies. Mm-hmm. If those African-American babies would have been born and at le- and had at least one child apiece, the, the Hispanic and African-American community would be at 30-some or 40% of America's population now. I think we've lost a lot of rights. Mm-hmm. We've we lost take, them in the we West. 